Welcome to a lesson on the Laplace transforms of integrals. A feature of Laplace transforms is that it is also able to easily deal with integral equations. That is equations in which integrals rather than derivatives of functions appear. The basic property which can be proved by applying the definition of the Laplace transform and doing integration by parts is the Laplace transform of the integral from zero to t of f of tau d tau equals one divided by s times big F of s. It's sometimes helpful to take the inverse Laplace transform of both sides of the equation and then write the equation as the integral from zero to t of f of tau d tau equals the inverse Laplace transform of one divided by s times big F of s. Notice the entire integral is a function of t because the limits of integration are from zero to t and f of tau is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of big F of s on the right. For our first example, we'll use this second equation to determine an inverse Laplace transform. We're asked to compute the inverse Laplace transform of one divided by the product of s and the quantity s squared plus one. We begin by writing the inverse Laplace transform as the inverse Laplace transform of one divided by s times one divided by the quantity s squared plus one. Notice in this form we know big F of s is equal to one divided by the quantity s squared plus one and the inverse Laplace transform is equal to the integral from zero to t of f of tau d tau, where f of tau is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of big F of s, which is the inverse Laplace transform of one divided by the quantity s squared plus one. This indicates that f of tau is equal to, again, the inverse Laplace transform of one divided by the quantity s squared plus one, which is equal to sine tau. This gives us the integral from zero to t of sine tau d tau and the antiderivative of sine tau is equal to negative cosine tau shown below, and big F of t minus big F of zero is negative cosine t minus negative one, which gives us an inverse Laplace transform of one minus cosine t. And now for the second example, we will use the first form of the equation, or the form the Laplace transform of the integral from zero to t of F of tau d tau equals one divided by s times big F of s to solve an integral equation. We want to solve t squared equals the integral from zero to t of e to the tau times x of tau d tau for x of t. We begin by taking the Laplace transform of both sides of the equation, which gives us the Laplace transform of t squared equals the Laplace transform of the integral from zero to t of e to the tau times x of tau d tau. On the left, the Laplace transform of t squared is equal to two divided by s cubed on the right, the Laplace transform is equal to one divided by s times big F of s, where big F of s is equal to the Laplace transform of f of tau, which we'll write as a function of t because we know the entire def integral is equal to a function of t. So we write the Laplace transform of the integral from zero to t of e to the tau times x of tau d tau as one divided by s times the Laplace transform of e to the t times x of t. And now we apply the shifting property to determine the Laplace transform of e to the t times x of t. Looking at the shifting property, notice a is equal to negative one, and therefore the Laplace transform of e to the t times x of t is equal to big X of the quantity s minus one. And therefore the right side becomes one divided by s times big X of the quantity s minus one, where big X of s is equal to the Laplace transform of x of t. So using our equation, if we solve for big X of the quantity S minus one, we multiply both sides by S, and we have big X of the quantity S minus one equals two divided by S squared, which indicates big X of S is equal to two divided by the square of the quantity S plus one. Notice to get X of S, we use X of the quantity S minus one and change S to the quantity S plus one. From here to determine X of T, we need to take the inverse Laplace transform of big X of S, which is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of two divided by the square of the quantity S plus one. To find the inverse Laplace transform, again, we need to use the shifting property shown here below. If we take the inverse Laplace transform of both sides, we have e to the power of negative AT times F of T equals the inverse Laplace transform of big F of the quantity S plus A. In our case, notice A is equal to one and big F of S which is big F without the shift, is two divided by S squared, and to find F of T, we take the inverse Laplace transform on both sides of the equation, giving us F of T equals two T. And now putting all the pieces together, the inverse Laplace transform 
of two divided by the square of the quantity s plus one is equal to e to the power of negative at times f of t. Well, e to the power of negative at is e to the negative t, and f of t is equal to two t. And therefore, we can write x of t as x of t equals two e to the negative t times t. I hope you found this helpful.